Okay. All right. It's another Wednesday night and y'all know what that means. It is time for <clears throat> conversations with Cougars. Y'all see that jersey on that fine looking fella right there. That's one of the original jerseys and that belongs to number 70, Jim Matheny and his lovely bride, Jennifer. And they are a multi-generation Northview family. And I want to welcome you guys to our show tonight. How are, how are both of y'all doing? Doing great. Right. Thanks for doing this. Yeah. All. Thanks for having us. Oh, absolutely. My pleasure. I'm so glad we're going to spend some time together. And I forgot to mention before the show, if either of us lose internet, just come back and we'll, we'll keep going. Uh, but we have, th this is our time on Wednesday nights to relive some great memories and, and gosh, there's so many uh, with the two of y'all. We may have to have, I can already tell we need to have round two because we can only squeeze it in so much in an hour. But uh, let's start with you, Jennifer. Introduce yourself and your, your, your macho husband right there and your lovely family and how you guys, for folks who don't know, what year did you graduate, Jim, and the kids? Well, I'm, of course, Jennifer Matheny. I was Jennifer Ballard when I attended Northview um, back in 1990 is when I graduated. So I'm dating myself a little bit, but my handsome husband, husband here graduated in 1984. Um, and our sons, uh, we actually had two sons that came through um, Northview. Uh, before we moved to our farm here in Columbia. And so one graduated in 2016 and one graduated in the class of 2019, the which was year. the last graduating class. So we actually had his, his robe. Um, the robe. They gave the robes out to the final graduating class of Northview High School. So we got to keep that, which was very special. Wow. So the Matheny family has almost spanned the life cycle of our high school. If the high school started in the fall of 78, Jim, you, you came in in the fall of 80 or 81? 80, I think. Yes, on that point. But it, I, I put some other numbers and uh, notes in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and we get back to the athletic side. But really, I was able and fortunate with another young man, Doug Jones, mm -hmm. to actually be around Northview in 78 and 79 in our seventh and eighth grade years. We'll get into that. Yeah, so you really have been around the program the entire uh, length of it with your youngest son graduating in 2019. I, I don't know too many families, except maybe the Parrish family uh, and a few others that may have been around for the 40 plus years of the school. I think that's just awesome. But uh, let's, I tell you what, Jennifer, we're gonna come back to you in just a minute, but let's, let's start with Jim since he's the old dude in the room. <laughs> and let's, let's, let's yeah. talk about that middle school experience. You and Doug Jones, of course, Doug ended up playing an integral role with the team as well as yourself. Uh, where were you guys in middle school? How did it come about that in middle school you started coming over to the high school? Well, I would say it was because we were just so much bigger. And of course, I hope a little talented. <laughs> I was at Girard Middle School mm -hmm. and Doug was at Beverly Middle School. Mm -hmm. And every afternoon, my mama and his, you know, we would have to get a ride for two years to Northview. And I mean, we knew all the areas. When you talk about, man, I go back my mind and I'm pretty sure if, uh, if some of the other coaches are watching back in the clay pit where the baseball field is, that was our, our practice area, you know, down oh, the hill. Oh, and, yeah. uh, but anyway, back to your question, I, and that's sort of how it evolved. And like I said, we've got to be around Coach Parrish, Coach Hicks, and uh, Coach Mack, you know, who just le uh, left us. Uh, they were, you know, I'll get into more of that later, but they really, uh, they were very important roles in our lives. Well, that's, you know, it's, it's all of us who are of a certain age. I'm, I'm not going to call us old. We'll just say vintage. That we had the pleasure uh, before we came up to the JV or the varsity up on the field, up on the regular or the, the main field, we all had to practice in that dust bowl way before the softball and baseball fields were, were developed and, and have been used for many years. But very little grass, mainly dirt, rocks, probably some glass. But the worst of it was my recollection, and tell me if you can relate to this since you put three years uh, down there, is the airflow seemed to go directly over the bowl. <laughs> it never found us 
down there. At least that's the way it was in, in the way my experience. You you are correct, sir. Very correct. And and especially you did not want to have to uh, run the hill. And we'll talk about that later. But you had to have uh, some some hill training, we call it. <laughs> well, uh, I want to say maybe Coach Josh Parrish or one of the somebody more recently than mm -hmm. us actually videotaped and put in our Northview group uh, a group of the guys running the hill. And it, you know how it snakes up and down. I couldn't watch it after like 20 seconds. It just brought back some really, really bad memories. But that was where you're, you know, that's how you learn the, the cougar system or the cougar way, uh, particularly if uh, if you needed a little extra cardio. That's uh, right. Yeah. That's right. I will so, throw yeah. another, another spin at you. Uh, uh, other, whatever, it was maybe too muddy because every once in a while it would rain. Yeah. But the other practice area, and a lot of the, I like to tell the younger kids this whenever um, I got to spend more time and we'll get into my profession, what I used to do for a living, <laughs> retire. Uh, the front of the gym was not always paved. And yeah. sometimes whenever it was too muddy, too whatever down there, there's your practice field right in front of the gym. Yeah, oh, <laughs> it was thankfully, I'm, I was two years behind you, Jim. Yep. But thankfully around that time, they paved that area. So we, we had the distinct pleasure of being in the, the pit all of, of ninth grade. And we thought it was a treat on those rare occasions. Little did we know what was in store for us when we came up as the ninth graders, uh, when the varsity and JV were gone and we got to practice on the big field. That just meant further running. That oh, yeah. just meant it just more of, more of the same. But anyway, Jim, as a seventh grader and as an eighth grader, that could be quite intimidating, I would think. I know that, that physically you guys had filled out and you, you showed promise, but psychologically, what was it like practicing against such older guys in middle school? Well, you're right about uh, wow, the, the wild wow factor, I call it. I mean, from the standpoint of, uh, you know, it's like what I would tell a lot of the kids that would go uh, from being a superstar senior, then to go to the freshman year of college. You know, that big change of like, you know, you're not the big fish anymore. Well, here I was this seventh grader and here I come be thrown in to, and we're, like I said, back to the coaches, they made you feel so warm and some of the other players, you know, that we, uh, we'll talk about later. If it wasn't for some of those, I, I would, I don't know where I'd be and not say I would quit, but that intimidation right there, when you know on the big field, you see all the big, big guys, our, yeah. our, our, our idols, so to speak, you know, from, White Jones to, uh, you know, McKibbins, uh, you know, I can tell you, the, you know, and Banach and, and um, you know, and um, Danny and, and David uh, Carmichael and uh, all those guys that, you know, you just wanted to go to the weight room and be like them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now, Jennifer, let me ask you, what was it like? Where did, where did you go to middle school and what was it like your first experience as a student coming over to the big school to Northview? I actually attended Honeysuckle Middle School. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, I went from Honeysuckle Middle School over <laughs> to Northview. I got to spend one year um, under James A. Smith before mm -hmm. Mr. Hardy came in. Mm -hmm. So um, what was kind of interesting about that is I had James A. Smith as a principal, then Mr. Hardy, and then mm -hmm. I got to evolve back as an employee Mm -hmm. um, which was one of my dreams was to come back and serve our students back mm -hmm. at my alma mater. Um, so I had a chance to work under other principals, you know, David Hobson, Greg Allen, Ron Snell, Chris Shaw, and Charles Corbett before I left to go to Wallace in my current position. Um, but going from Honeysuckle over to Northview, what was, what was kind of neat is Jim's sister um, and my sister both were already at Northview. So um, they graduated in 85. So they were a year behind um, Jim's class. Um, Jim's sister just passed away, Kay, Smith, uh, Kay Matheny Smith, uh, passed away from ocular uh, cancer. Uh, so we just lost her. But, um, you know, I already had so many friends through my sister's friends and through Kay. Kay was a family friend, so we all knew each other. Mm -hmm. um, so I already had that Cougar connection um, in middle school and already felt like I was a part of the Cougar family before I got there. Oh, first and, and foremost in my response, Jim, is I'm very sorry for the loss of your, your sister. I did not, did not know that. No, I certainly knew her ahead of me in school. I certainly knew her back in the day. Um, 
Well, Jennifer, your experience coming over and knowing a bunch of students already is very different than those most of whom come over or people who uh, come from out of town who may not know another single person uh, that when they show up in that school as you guys, as we all know, is so large, it's like a junior college uh, campus. It can be quite intimidating. And back in the day, there was well over a thousand, I, I don't know, 12, 1300 kids back in the, in the eighties each year, I'm just guessing, but that's a lot of kids. Uh, I, and, and that's, I'm, I'm so glad that you had that group to come to. Uh, but I also want to ask you, when you were working at Northview, was it also during the years that either or both of your sons were at the school? Yes, um, I did have the privilege of, of working with my children there. Um, they may not agree with that <laughs> um, because Jim actually came over as well as a school resource officer. Um, he is he was a Dothan police officer and he was at the near the end of his career um, with the police department. But uh, the boys would probably tell you that that was a good thing and a bad thing having mom uh, being a guidance counselor at the school um, because she knew everything that was going on, um, but tried to not micromanage them and let them be young, young men and young adults. Um, so it was cool having mom there because they could come by and get into my purse and get money when they needed it uh, to put on their lunch account. But it was not so cool because I knew mom <coughs> knew everything that was going on at the school. Um, I was going to so. say, and having dad there as a resource officer, there wasn't a whole lot of, of things they could get away with or their buddies could get away with without word finding one of the two of y'all, I suspect. We should have had them on as well. I'd love to hear their reactions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, I'm sure that they would probably give you their reaction to that. One of them happens to be um, at Fort Bragg. He's an engineer. Um, oh, very good. So he's at Fort Bragg on a, on a military project for his company. Mm -hmm. um, and the other one is actually studying for finals for Wallace. He attends Wallace Community College. And then, like I said, we have two other sons. They're twins. Mm -hmm. um, and they attend Headland, but um, they, they had the benefit of not being in school with mom or dad. So yeah, they, 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 probably, they probably are getting the benefit of maybe a little bit more chilled out mom and dad versus the first two with you guys being on the campus. But that's so great. That, that's awesome. Uh, but I hate to keep bouncing back and forth, but I got so many things I want to ask you guys. But before we go further, Shirley C. is in here and says to tell you both hello. Hey, Shirley. Mike and Gail, too, are both watching. If you guys may have seen recently, I had Mike on the show. He was the stadium announcer for many, many years. And yeah. uh, what a what a great, great conversation we had. And there's a whole bunch more folks. I just is not telling me who's who's here. But of course, I've got Jennifer and Jim Matheny uh, with us. Multi multi generation Cougar family. Jim, of course, was on the first Northview uh state championship team. And Jim, that's kind of where I want to want to head for a little bit. Um, that's, I, I think that even my team, my state championship team would tell the public and admit in a vote that the 81 team was the best team that Northview ever fielded, 13 and one, so dominant on many, many occasions. But let's lead up to that year. In 1980, that would have been your uh, sophomore year, maybe? Right. Where, where were you playing varsity, JV? What, what was going on with you football-wise? Yeah, I, I was, like I said, I was blessed being, I only had played two years ninth grade. And my ninth grade year, I was actually on the varsity. And beside, was me, was Larry Roberts beside me. And um, I can tell you the whole line, but I mean, that's, you know, you know, go back to some great folks that I really miss. You know, we lost Larry not too long ago. Uh, but i uh, tell you, um, and then Jeff Coleman was beside me and, but anyway, I was always offensive tackle. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was sort of a, a blessing on the part of being able to be there on campus that long and to finally get my chance. And Coach Fairs was very fair, and I earned it. Because uh, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I was very fortunate to be able to play uh, those years. Uh, you know. Well, back then, our region, and for many, many years, was Enterprise, Ozark, and Dothan, and us. And we were 4A up through 1984. Then we moved up to the 6A and now Dothan High will move to 7A, I believe this fall. 
But back in the day, our three big rivals were Enterprise, Dothan, and, and uh, Inter- uh, Ozark. Gosh, I've got a little brain cramp. But I bet the opposing coaches were just sick and tired of seeing you and Doug Jones. Like, how old are these dudes? Do they have their families already? How we got to check birth certificates because I know at age nineteen, you age or above age nineteen, I think you age out of high school sports. But my gosh, how many games <laughs> you you played against Dothan uh, Enterprise and Ozark? Probably six straight years. Oh gosh, yes. Uh, and then back in the days when it was D. A. Smith, of course, you know, started in ninth grade, so right. we knew a lot of the same uh, players and. And, of course, Doug played everything from defense, running back. And, of course, you know, he was a fullback like you wouldn't believe him. You remember, he did go to Tennessee for a little bit when he yep. graduated. And, of course, he had so many guys back in those days that was able to go to uh, colleges, uh, not just from the 81 team, but, you know, a lot of the big-time coaches were on campus recruiting Larry and a few others. And, uh, you know, I, I you know, I feel very blessed to be able to play who I, who play, I played with some very great people. But, I mean, beside athletes. People, I was going to say, you, you played with some superior athletic talent, but you played with even greater men. I and and it, trickling down from the coaches and the way they led the program and set great examples, of course. But let's just as a little side uh, note, uh, I am compiling, and this is going to take forever, but I'm trying to compile a list of all football players in the 41 years mm-hmm. who went from Northview and played on any collegiate program so there's I'm going to put something out in the next couple of days with the short list that I've compiled and I'm hoping folks will will add to it from their respective classes but Jim I want to ask you let's talk about Larry Roberts for a minute let's talk about being right there he played tight end he played a whole bunch of positions but he played tight end and you played right next to him and just share a little bit about what what most folks don't see in the huddle that presence on the line. It's those things that we don't get to see. What was that like for you? Oh, goodness, Bernard. I tell you, Larry's personality. I tell you, um, he'd light up the room. Uh, you knew that he meant business. He knew how to cut up and play and carry on. But when it was business, he was serious. And you knew, and that just bled into you. And you felt that vibe. And you know that when you're getting ready to do that next play, it was going to be the best or you give it the best you got. And of course, that's what all you know, all the coaches instilled in us. But we knew we well, Larry on the field, and uh, you know, I'll, in a little bit, I hope we can talk more about that state championship year run because I, I mean, the, those games how it all evolved with you know with Dickie Lillard and David Alford, Doctor Alford. Now, I mean, and, but with Larry, like you said, the idea that he, uh, you know, he was just a great person, but he he worked so hard. I really, by the time I think he finally got to the 49ers, he was at his peak, I guess. But I think he, he could have got a little bit better because he was always wanting to get better, do do better, if you want to say, you know. You know, it, it's it's athletes like Larry, Brent Gilbert, just the, yes. the leaders of any given team. Yes. It just feeds off on the teammates. It makes the teammates have more confidence in their own game and they want to impress their own teammates with what they're doing. And it just, you know, it, it's, it just rises everyone. Uh, Jennifer and Jim, uh, Tara Wade Estes says to tell you both hello. She's just joined us. Thank you, Tara. Um, let's move on. Uh, Jennifer, are you, were you a sports fan growing up? Or at what point did you become a sports fan? Uh, oh, I, I live, <laughs> eat, breathe, and I, I mean, and die sports. I, I, I guess that's probably why the Lord blessed me with all boys, because he knew I couldn't handle girls. <laughs> um, and, and I say that most affectionately, but it, it really is because I've always been an avid um, tomboy, <laughs> for lack of a better word. So um, I played girls softball with my church league. I, I was always bass fishing, hunting. Um, I'm an outdoorsman. In fact, we moved to our farm so I could be outside so that when I retire, I can wrangle cattle um, and get back into horses and stuff. So it's, um, you know, sports, it, it really didn't shock me. It was kind of funny because Jim had always been around our family. Um, Jim and Kay both, um, his sister, had been around our family, We'd been family friends. And so, um, you know, I'd grown up going to the ball games. Um, 
spending those Friday nights at Rip Hughes. That, that, that was the place to be. Right, you, yeah. If you weren't at Rip Hughes, um, you know, I, I just, I don't know what to say about that, but we were always at Rip Hughes, um, stayed there until the place cleared out. He didn't want to go home. Um, we packed the stadiums out. Um, the pep rallies oh, good. Um, were the best pep rallies that were ever, um, that we ever had and ever will be. And I can say that sincerely because I've been there for so long. Um, you know, we've, we've got so many generational people that, you know, get online with us. They can attest to that. Even those that have come back with their kids and come back to visit, they'll tell you that the James A. Smith and the Phil Hardy days, um, those were some incredible times of school spirit. Well, it's, it's let me ask you, how much fresh bread did you get in the stadium uh, or in the games on Friday nights? I know on the field, we could certainly smell the, the bread. Oh, colonial. Oh, oh yeah. We, in fact, we had that conversation <laughs> with our boys the other day. You could make yourself sick um, off of the smell of that fresh bread. And with him being a police officer, um, they used to work their beat. They would call the, the, the cops on that beat and would say, come by here. We had some bread that didn't cook up correctly so they would let all the police yeah. officers yeah. on that shift come by and get fresh bread the guys would go by and, and we get a big old thing of milk butter milk and oh a tub gosh. of butter and just sit there and eat fresh colonial bread and make themselves <laughs> yeah. sick i said y'all don't need to tell everybody oh, that man. but um, <laughs> throw it away. they work <laughs> that's right that's right well let's let's pivot for just a second because with both of you having experience as students with dr smith as your principal and you coming all the way forward, Jennifer being an employee with several principals after that, those pep rallies, when Dr. Smith concluded them, Jim, give me your first impression. Oh my goodness, Bernard, you never knew what suit he was going to wear <laughs> that Friday. I don't know how many suits he had, but you know that it was going to be some kind of pep rally. No matter if we had lost, you know, one, you are going to be uplifted for sure. Electrifying. <laughs> Electrifying. <laughs> Electrifying. And, and when he, when Dr. Smith would conclude the pep rallies with his famous poems about don't meet me there, beat me there, you I never was, could hear, you couldn't hear him. Oh. And why was that, Jennifer? Why couldn't you hear him? Oh, we would drown them out because we would join in and we would drown him out. You know, I want to see all your smiling faces in their usual places. You know, don't meet me there, beat me there. I mean, we would just drown the man out and he didn't stand a chance, bless his heart. And there is on our site, one of the video clips is him giving one of those uh, poems at the end of a pep rally. I found that and it's posted that. In, the, in the group. Um, Charles Bronson says to tell you both hello. Oh, Charles. long time no see. And Anthony Palmer has joined the conversation. Hey, Anthony, I don't have an answer about your jersey, but I'll look into that, Anthony. We'll get back with you on that, my friend. But let's talk about pep rallies after Mr. Hardy and any of the other principals. Did they participate up to the level that Dr. Smith did? Um, well, no one, I, I'm going to be, I'm biased in saying that no one could top yeah. James A. Smith. I mean, um, God rest his soul. No, no one could top him. But um, I, I did have a, a principal in my tenure that did try to participate and make it a lot of fun uh, or tried to try to get it to that level with the hype and the spirit. Um, and I would have to say that that was Ron Snell um, in, in the years that I worked there. Um, he tried to get it up to that hype level. And he, he did a, a pretty pretty awesome job getting it there. It still wasn't quite that level, but it, it was as close to that level as we had seen in a number of years. Did, did Mr. Snell have a famous uh, catchphrase or did he do anything specifically that he was known for? Um, at pep rallies, no, not specifically, but I can tell you he, um, he made a point to know, believe it or not, some people might not believe this, but he knew every child's name. Um, he, he could see, he, he recognized students by their, he, he would associate faces with names and he would walk up and he would make a point to learn a student's name. 
and he may not know it by the first day of school, but he would know it by the last day of school, which wow. made such an impression <clears throat> on um, on students. It made an impression on on my son, uh, my oldest boy, when he was there. He was like, "Mama, he knows everybody's name," because um, that was so personal. Um, you know, for a, a principal to take time out of his schedule to actually um, <clears throat> to learn the students um, and to actually be present at all times, you know, during bell changes, he was visible um, and accessible to the students. Um, so um, he would always tell students to walk with a purpose. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was one of his famous catchphrases is, you know, walk with a purpose or step with a purpose. And so um, I kind of carry that, you know, that phrase with me, you know, around too, when I talk to students, you know, you need to step with a purpose or, or walk with a purpose, um, you know, you know, with, with any principal, they all had positive attributes, you know, to contribute. Um, some even had some, you know, flaws. Uh, everybody had a few flaws. Sure. Um, but overall, they made great contributions to the, you know, to the Cougar Nation. Um, mm -hmm. But like I said, you just can't top James. Nope. James A. And, and especially, like I said, Phil Hardy did a tremendous job too. And we're still really good friends with with Phil Hardy, went to church with him for a long time before we moved to the farm and started attending another church. Um, but just great, great men that were great leaders during that time. They, they truly were. And guys, I found a few weeks back, it's been a couple months now, I found a picture from an old yearbook of the when the school was, was under construction. And you may have seen this in the group, but it was the where the lockers were originally placed in the big open space outside the library mm -hmm. that they were still in the construction in this picture. I haven't found one <clears throat> where there's a big picture where they've been completed or kids are going through there. But here's my question for you both. And I'll start with you, Jim. When we first got there, my years and your years and probably yours too, Jennifer, because I don't know when they changed it. But do you remember all those lockers being in that one big open space? I had never seen lockers set up like that. I'd always seen them against walls. I don't know whose idea it was for that, but for a while, I'm sure it was a good idea, but something must have happened or they may have had, somebody came up with a different design where they obviously moved them. Were you guys, was it during your tenure uh, Jennifer as a teacher or, or, or being part of a guidance counselor as part of the school that they moved it? I remember it happening when I was a student, um, mm -hmm. them getting moved around the I didn't, I didn't realize that. Okay. Yeah. It was actually when I was a student because I actually had a locker in the center one of the years and then it was around the edges um, mm -hmm. one, some of the other years. But I, I do know we had some incidents. I'm not going to name a student's name, but you know, the students would have labs. Um, with Miss Hicks and other uh, other teachers, and they'd have the formaldehyde um, frogs that they would uh, take from the lab, and would throw them in the commons across the across the commons. So you might uh -huh. get whacked with a formaldehyde frog or any other <laughs> object. Um, um, so I do feel like that. Hold on, hold on, just a second, Jim. You got something you want to share with us? He might have participated <laughs> in that. Yeah. The no, statute of limitations is long gone. I, believe me, I know, Brother Bernard, I know. It's just, we're going back to what she says. Safety. Well, it was for safety, but back to when I was there, <laughs> it was one of those same things. You never knew what was going to happen in that area because you no, couldn't really see. You couldn't see. And uh, so it, that was <laughs> sort of, that. Just, I chuckle when I think about that because th there's so many other things that happened similar to that that, Sure. You just knew around each Book, corner. Books you know, flying you know. across. Jennifer, my senior year, a cherry bomb was exploded in one of the lockers. I don't know if you remember that. I'll tell you offline who did it, but there was a cherry bomb that blew up one of the lockers. I can see that. So yeah. between between books flying across the commons mm -hmm. and formaldehyde frogs, because mm -hmm. I personally witnessed that myself as a student. Um, I can tell you that's probably it was likely a safety issue um, from them being able to not really see what was going on in between those lockers and decide. Okay, you know, trying to cram 50 or 100 kids in one aisle, each aisle, 
Yeah. That was crazy. We don't we don't have to keep talking about the lockers. We can move on to something <laughs> something better. But Jim, let me ask you, where was one of your favorite classes and teachers? And I'm and, and same for you, Jennifer. Woo, my goodness gracious, Bernard. Well, now that's an assumption that you actually went to class and that I, you picked, well. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, brother. Oh, uh, there. <laughs> First one jumps out, of course, Miss Ruth, Miss Hooks. Mm -hmm. I mean, good gracious. Uh, Miss uh, Spivey, Norma Jean, golly. I mean, 300 Hall, you know, Mr. Helms. I mean, I could go on and on of just, just people that were just great teachers that cared about you, your, what they, you were going to do with your life. I mean, mm -hmm. they didn't just say, sit down and listen to what I got to say. They got, in your face, make sure you knew what they wanted you to know. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, you, yes. anyway, it was, it was just a, a great, um, you know, memories of all that I can say so many more, but those are ones that pop out real quick in my mind. Well, Jennifer, before you answer, I still want to know the answer to this. And, and I, I'm waiting to hear from um, <laughs> one of my guidance counselors from back in the day. Why would I have fifth period Spanish in the 600 hall and have to be down at football five minutes after the bell rings and not so I don't sub, suffer Coach Tribu waiting, just waiting. Uh, Nomber, where, where you been? I mean, who does anyway? That's just my issue. But Jennifer, what were some of your favorite classes and, and teachers who you had? Um, I have to reiterate some of the same ones, but Lamar Helms, um, to this day, I say that Lamar Helms taught me how to take notes. Um, okay. I, yeah. I survived Western Civ in college because of Lamar Helms. Yeah. And I know more about geography than I ever wanted to know about geography <laughs> because of his map test. Um, yep. He would give us map tests on um, every part of the world weekly. And he was a stickler for how those maps looked. Um, so if you're ever watching in the future of Mr. Helms, I love you, but I hated your maps at that particular time because you were such a stickler. But I, appreciate I still have my I still have my Alabama project that I did with Jeff uh, Lupinacci back in I think 11th grade and we were so proud of this thing and it was 20 pages and I was coloring and we were doing all I still have it because I'm so proud of it but you're right it all comes from Mr. Helms yes and and then of course Ruth Hooks with um, the love of Shakespeare and the Canterbury Tales and I can still recite some of that I'm not going to because we don't have time <laughs> but she would be appreciative of the fact that I can still say some of the Canterbury Tales um, you know and just oh Catherine, gosh yeah, yeah Catherine Foster both are, you know, I believe we're both in choir you know, uh, so so Catherine, we, we know, both sang in mag madrigals uh, unfortunately not together since we graduated at two different times but we were both in madrigals so we had an awesome time there um Mr. Christian oh yeah um, even though I only spent one year in the marching band there was not a finer band director <clears throat> than uh John Christian sure um, Tim Gilly did a good job too. Yeah, <laughs> Tim, Tim was his assistant, but I wasn't with him <clears throat> after that. Yeah. So um, I'm talking about actual time yeah, we were there. with sure. Um, sure. a band director. But um, there's just so many that made influences on our lives. Um, like I said, Norma Jean. Um, Golly. I want to give everybody on each hall and going down my mind. I'm going, okay, on 600 Hall, have been Mr. Miss Jernigan. Oh, yeah, Mr. Yeah. I learned a Golly. lot of math because of Miss Jernigan. Yeah. Um, so a lot, a lot of students did. Yes, she was an awesome, awesome math teacher. Uh, so. Charles, Charles remembers that Mr. Helms gave those blue book tests. Oh, used to oh yes, to write the that you had books, to fill so up a blue book. book. And and yeah. that helped even our because I went off to Troy State. I can say Troy State because I was there. Was <laughs> anyway, right, right. I was lucky enough to know all about that blue book from Mr. Helms because when I got to Troy, the same professor did the same thing. I said, "Hey, I got this." <laughs> yep. Yep. We wrote the same. I was at Vanderbilt. Those blue books came up and I was like, thank you, Mr. Helms. <laughs> I recognize this. Jim, let's move back to the football field. Let's talk about Friday afternoon home games. We used to have the pep rallies at the end of the day and it would send off the school on a big high. Everybody's pumped up. Cheerleaders doing their thing. Band goes and does its thing. Football team. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about going to eat and the routine do you remember any of that oh yeah but plus i wanted to, i want to reciprocate the question did y'all do the same as us when i finished what i say well you of course you knew 
right after pep rally is get your certain belongings. You get on the bus because you're going to the movie first. We went to That's the movie. Right. That's right. Of course, our minds are on. I mean, I know Coach Pearson wants us to sort of, if you want to call it relax, but my goodness, I'm sitting in my mind going, all the plays I got to get ready for, who's this, my opponent, we've been watching film. I know this you know, person I'm finna be blocking all, you know, a couple hours. And anyway, over and over my mind, I'm not really paying attention to the movie. And of course, after the movie, you know, it, I guess it lasted two hours, <laughs> we would uh, go to Western Sizzling or Western Steer. I can't remember which, but they changed names. And of course, we had us a steak and a potato. And, you know, you got all these, all of us piling in at, I forget what time of day it was, four or five o'clock, you know, and we're the only ones in there. And of course we have a, a little bit of discussion, not much. We're, 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 we're getting into business now, you know, we're getting down to, you know, getting on our, uh, what we've we got to do. And there wasn't much uh, horse playing and carrying on of course. And, uh, but just back to that team, team spirit. And, uh, you know, you know, you can't beat Coach Parrish getting ready after uh, we're going to warm up on the field. I'm not, not going to get ahead of you, but, I tell you, I, to this day, think about those uh, pep speeches right before we go on the field. I, I tell you, how he did that for all those years of his coaching, I'm pretty sure every uh, speech before that game, I, I, I mean, how and what he could do to get you ready to go on that field. I mean, how, how about you? What about what y'all's routine was? Oh, I, I, Jim, I would have loved to have had a recording of Coach Parrish's speeches. Absolutely, because that they're timeless. But our routine was very, very similar to y'all's. And I'll say the thing about going to eat, I, in my junior and senior years when I was playing, I just, I couldn't eat anything. I was just too, too, too much in a, a knot, I guess. I drank <clears throat> a lot of, I don't know if it was Gatorade back then or whatever the product was. Um, that would be about it. I wouldn't eat until after the game, but I, re I can remember being at halftime of most games, just being starving. It's like, yeah, I got to have a candy bar or something. But with Coach Parrish under the, in the clubhouse or the locker room, the band is over us. They're, they're, they're in their place. The student section is right there as well. You could just feel Rip Hughes was alive. That stadium just on our side was just so full of, of spirit combined with Coach Parrish's passionate speech. And then you come out, you just want to go, you know, beat the world. And that was, that was the beauty of what Coach Parrish was able to do with his teams. That's what I always admired about him. Right. And, and I want to add, too, is we knew of all those practices, you know, and you know, I know how the practices were. They got you ready. And you know, without a shadow of a doubt, that from two days in the summer through all getting ready for a fall, I mean, you know, once you step on that field, your body was ready to, to go four quarters or sometimes we would – you know, we were in the uh, overtime, you know, and I think we still did the same type of overtime, put it on the 20-yard yeah. line, and you got to pull down, you got to get it in. And I can go back to our, a lot of our <laughs> games going out before we really dug in to know, okay, all those suicides, all those extra slaps, and it's going to pay off now, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, Jennifer, let me ask you, what was – you have the, the benefit of being an alum of the school. You have the benefit of being a, an employee of the school and a mother of children who went to the school. What was it about being a student? We'll start there at Northview that just made it special your time period at that time, you know, when you were in school. Wow. Um, the, the student years were probably some of the most influential years because, you know, that's when you're really establishing who you are, you know, or trying to establish who you are. Um, you know, the experiences you're going through in life and, you know, you're, so you, you try to surround yourself with your friend, your friend group and, um, you know, try to keep them as positive as you possibly can during those years. But I think having been at a school as strong as Northview was back in the day um, and not having the, you know, we had peer pressure. Our generation, your generation is not experiencing the peer pressure like the kids are today. Um, and and I'm, I'm, I'm keeping that very real. Um, it, it was easy to be a student at Northview um, because the, the school spirit was high you had the teachers that loved you and cared. They truly cared. Um, that was a very hard time for me uh, during my life. My parents were divorcing. 
Um, you know, so going through, you know, what should be a traumatic time. I actually had teachers that rallied around me. Um, my guidance counselor was Carolyn Bass. She also turned out to be my mentor. Um, so I trained under Carolyn Bass and we're still friends to this day. So um, there was a beauty in that because, you know, she went through those developmental years with me there, but she also says, well, that's what made you such a good guidance counselor coming back to be able to give back. Oh, um, but, I, but I'm able to say it's because I had such a great experience at Northview um, mm -hmm. as a student that it just evolved naturally for me. Um, you know, that's not to say that you're not going to have every now and again, those normal drama issues that every teenager goes right. through. Sure. Um, but it just was easy as a student for me. And, it's, and, and Jim, I know your experience was different playing sports and being a little bit older, but you also have a commonality uh, that you both were in choir. And not many athletes back in the day did other things except be athletes. You were a rare exception. You had other talents and interests, of course, and you had the gift to be able to sing. Well, I, now, Brad, <laughs> He had the gift now, I'm telling you. <laughs> but my, my question to you is, is, you know, you're thinking out of a whole different side of your brain than you do with the football part. Was it an easy transition for you or was it one that just took a little bit of time? I may be a lot bigger than anybody in this room, but I certainly belong in this room and I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I hope that makes sense. It does. You're right. It does. Um, I, I always, I still to this day love singing. And uh, I used to do a lot uh, in choir at my church. And it sort of just bled into that a little bit. But with Miss Foster, and, you know, and, and just the way the type of person and teacher she was, it just made you feel comfortable no matter, you know, who you were. And uh, I just, and then, of course, in watching Brent Gilbert. And there's some other players that were, we were, you know, we were like, shoot, yeah, we do this. You know, hey, we know football players. We're not okay. too much of yeah, we're not too, yeah, well, But, uh, and that was just a very, like you said, on the being uh diverse um I, I was in my mind i kept thinking you know I'm, I'm glad i can do something different than just be a a, a jock so to speak you know which and I, I love that and i still love sports today but but sure. get out of that frame of mind of going well they're just a, a football player that's all they do well did did you ever have conversations either with brent or some of the other ball players with miss foster about you know when you're on the football team at, at northview and most high schools that's a high profile place to be you're wearing your jersey. People know you on Friday nights because you're a little bigger than everybody else, that kind of thing. But did it bring a little bit more attention to the choir? Did Miss Foster ever mention those things that I've got some of the football players uh, in my choir? I don't remember us having a discussion about that, but I know uh, it was sort of an even kill because we were still doing very well at state. You know, I think Brent even has a few medals and I, I never was able to meddle, so to speak, in that. But um, our music, again, you know, where the gym was and the choir and the band, we were all right there together all the time, from summer to whatever. So we all were like in a, our own little um, uh, family to where we were all, you know, trying to help each other and, and just encourage each other. And, uh, and so, but we all, you're gonna make a, say a, a statement for Northview. We, everybody knew where Northview was. That's and right. personally, personally, the girls loved having the uh, football players in in a choir because, <laughs> you know, even Jim, even though he was older than I was, we still had football players in Madrigals. Um, Drew McAllister no, uh, was my Madrigal partner uh, much of the time, and he was a football player. So we had several football players that still were in Madrigals um, even whenever I was there. So it, it still became a status that, it's okay to be a jock and be in the madrigals. If you can sing and you can play football, that was just a win-win combination right there. I'm not, I'm not gonna be presumptuous and assume that Jim and all the other football players were all baritones, but I can't, I can't, I can't imagine too many of those high, <laughs> those high <laughs> notes getting hit by the offensive line. <laughs> no, 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 believe me. I love some of the days when we did some of the Billy Joel stuff, you know, I, I would, I could, Try to get as low, but I mean, that was my only forte was trying to be low. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. And, and speaking of the line, Joseph Johnson, JJ says to tell you both hello. Well, well you know, I got to say this real quick. I'm glad Joe's, I'm glad to, I hope Bud Young's doing well. But uh, one of my nickname that I got from the team, of course, Joseph and them are a little older, 
But Bud and Joseph gave me one of the nicknames I had, and that was Moose. And that came from <laughs> one of the great workout days. And you know, Bernard, when we, I mean, that was our weight room upstairs. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we were there, sometimes more there than we were at our regular house. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, as I, I can't remember, it. I was either doing bench pressing or I was deadlifting and I was making this noise. And then <laughs> Joseph and Bud go, hey, there's a moose over here or a moose somewhere. And it, it stuck. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Uh, we got a few more minutes, guys. Jennifer and Jim Matheny, some awesome stories and memories. I want to ask you guys now to put on your hats as parents. As parents, we want nothing but the best for our kids. We want to tell them about the old days. It was like this back in the day. But it's tougher. It's different when both your parents are at your school and they're employed there. At what point either did the boys... <laughs> have conversations and sit you down or did you have to sit down with them and say all right I'm done telling you about the good old days and how it was back in my time because you know the eye rolls came it does it with every kid parent dynamics but tell us a little bit about that because yours is a little different having your sons at the school while you're there well let me just start real quick um uh, at one time when uh, I, I had just transferred out of the investigation to two SROs and, and that was my boys or our oldest senior year. And of course, Jennifer was there. I was there and he was there. So we look back at the records going, I wonder how many families have had three generation or, two, you know, with, within the school. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. going back to what I was going to tell you, sort of ironic about that is uh, he also played football and baseball and uh, I let him be his own person. Um, that's the way my, my father did me. But, you know, what I was going to tell you, the ironic part of how big school was, uh, some days I would only see him at the very beginning of the day and, of course, getting ready to go home. And then everybody would look at me funny like, no, you had to see him every day, you know, around campus and halls. And and, and some days I wouldn't even see her if I didn't go to her office for some reason. So back to the issue of what you ask is, in my eyes, I want them, all four of our boys, they're going to be their own person. That was the way I left it. Well, and he, and to his credit, he never pushed his success on the football field on the boys. Um, he's always been very humble about his football days. Um, you know, in fact, one of the boys said to him the other day, they're like, Dad, weren't you supposed to play for Auburn? And he said, yeah, I was supposed to play for Auburn. I wanted but to. I wanted to, but I, you know, I tore, my, tore my leg up, you know. Um, but he, he's never bragged or boasted about that. And I've always been very proud of him for not forcing the boys to, uh, to play a sport, uh, for allowing them to be who they wanted to be um, as far as athleticism um, came into play and let them establish who they wanted to be. Um, but from, from my side, um, from the academic and curriculum side as well, um, <clears throat> I had to walk a fine line too, because I wanted the boys to make a decision um, where they could truly say it was their choice as well. I was uh, the dual enrollment and a advanced placement coordinator for my school, testing coordinator. I handled a whole, I wore a lot of hats. And so yeah. they would say, you know, well, which, which one do you think I should do? And I'm like, I'm not gonna tell you which one you should do. Mm -hmm. I want you to make an informed decision about which one's best for you. Wow. Because one day I want you to look back and say that was my decision. And that's still the platform of how I present myself today, even to other people's children that I've talked to. Sure. Current, current Dothan High, which is, you know, now the Northview is the Dothan High. Right. Right. I still sell it that way. Um, the same way I would sell it to my own, to my own children. Sure. Well, that's uh, certainly fair. Certainly. All right. Yeah. I have to ask you, and I need an honest answer. How much rectangle pizza did Jim consume while he was an SRO at the school? I'm not talking about his days as a high schooler. We all know that. I'm talking about as an SRO. Well, they they reeled us yeah. they reeled us back as employees. Yeah, now. they didn't have as much as you think yeah, they like used to. We right? didn't uh, get the good pizza as employees. Oh, they, they, they did some changing. Yeah, <laughs> the, the the pink. The big choice for me was either pink or yellow lemonade to go with the French fries and the pizza. Right. That, we didn't even get a tea urn right there near the, where you could go up and get tea or- Yeah, things have changed. Yeah, it changed yeah. a lot right there near yeah. the, uh, the latter part of my tenure with uh, 
to work to you before I left, but. Did y'all get to also work lunch line like we did? Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. well see, I wasn't sure when they stopped because when I got yeah. to be an SRO. No, I know it kept going into the 90s because both okay. of my brothers did that and David graduated okay. in 94. Jim, let's talk about, you just you just mentioned Auburn. Um, I know that you hurt your knee, uh, I think going into your senior year. Uh, to talk to us a little bit about that. And I know it's not a great time in your academic or athletic memories, but it's an important one because I know there were a lot of lessons learned from there. So well, share a little bit about that. Yeah, well, it was, but I tell you, I give my, my credit and my uh, honor to God who gave me, uh, you know, wh whatever abilities I've got, talents and everything. So I, I always go back to that from the standpoint. I was blessed, like I said, going back to Larry because watching, having Larry being watched, well, of course, I was right beside him. So they, you know, so I got some attention too, along with the rest of us guys, because you, you wouldn't believe all the coaches back in those days that came to Northview to see, you know, Larry. You know, the great Paul Bear Bryant came out there, of course. I don't know if you know that or not, but I got I saw Coach Bryant from a distance uh, one day. Uh, of course, he had to walk from the gym across the dirt parking lot <laughs> to get to his car. Uh, anyway, things like that. So, uh, anyway, yes, I um, my junior year, I was able to uh, go to one of the uh, football camps for Pat Dye, and uh, I did okay. And, of course, I'm hopefully going to do something with Auburn one day, whether it either through athletics or through, uh, you know, going through a, just a regular uh, BS degree. But of course I messed my knee up um, my, going into my so senior year and had surgery. And of course I was up there and of course, you know, Coach Dye was a very gracious man. He was there for another reason, but he he came by my room and uh, wished me the best and said, you know, you know, work hard and try to get back if you could. Of course, I, I wasn't able to, um, I just uh, only maybe got maybe 8% back, but, uh, you know, you're right. It's a life lesson I learned out of that. Um, but uh, anyway, I go back to the, the team as a whole and Larry that gave me uh, that ability and that uh, that attention, so to speak, to be noticed a little bit, if you want to call it. Well, it's 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 amazing how sports medicine has come such a long way over the decades. Now, uh, if your type of injury, they get back on the field so so much so quickly. But you're right. It was a matter of when you got hurt, determined, you know, if or when you got to come back and, and play your sport. But I know you're still part of the program all the way through your senior year, part of that state championship team. And oh, <laughs> of course, Miss C, I'm telling you, Miss C is the memory of Northview High School. She is awesome. The football players had the cafeteria ladies wrapped around their little fingers. That's so funny. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that about all the cafeteria ladies because some of those ladies were tough, but you're, yeah, it Pretty was. Funny. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, guys, gosh, this has been such a, a fun conversation for me. I really appreciate you taking some time and sharing some of your stories and your journey with us. So thank you so much. Well, we appreciate yeah, you. We do. We appreciate it so much. And like I said, it was fun because we got to dig out his yep. jersey and, and still his got the old ring, you state know, championship <laughs> ring. I dug out my my senior prom uh, t shirt because you know they still pass those out uh, yep. even to this day. And so I dug out my senior prom uh, t shirt and uh, just started pulling out some memorabilia to. Uh, get ready for this and that was a lot of fun and the boys were like what are y'all doing and I was like we're getting ready to walk down memory lane here which is going to be great so we oh. certainly do appreciate the opportunity oh it's my my pleasure Tim Bright says to tell you hello Sissy Carol Reynolds says to tell you hello Norris Thomas says to tell you hello yeah. there's a bunch of folks who popped in and are now saying hello but guys each Wednesday night seven o'clock central conversations with cougars we're going to keep doing this i'm going to keep bugging folks to come on and we'll keep having some great conversations like the one we had tonight steve stutz says to hey, tell you hey. hello well i'm gonna do that i'm gonna tell like brent gilbert i'm gonna see those people that i do here once in a while I'll say you know get in touch with you well I, I i'm gonna send you the link but i did i did have a great conversation with brent several months ago did you? okay uh, but I'm, I'm making my way i've had shane cobb back then uh, bud young a bunch of folks from back then. I want to get some of the younger. I want to have maybe your sons, uh, whoever played football, if one of them or both of them will come on if they if they will put up with me. And uh, it'll be under the auspice that their parents cannot interfere or comment. 
while we're having that conversation. But guys, thank you again. Y'all have a safe rest of your week and we'll catch you next Wednesday night. Take thank care. you so much.